Welcome back to My Christian Observations Podcast. I'm Wayne. Today I'm going to be doing something a little different than my normal Bible teaching or Bible study. We're going to be talking about a celebrity that just recently got baptized in public. Her name is Catherine Von Drakenberg. You may also know her as Kat Von D. So today I'm going to do a little bit of a commentary. I'm going to play the audio from Kat Von D. This is her response. She Recently she got baptized. And this is her response to the comments that she's gotten over the last several weeks from both atheists and Christians alike. Now, if you're not familiar with Kat Von D, she's a Mexican-American tattoo artist. You've probably seen her on TV. She's a television personality. She's an entrepreneur. She's a recording artist. She's best known for her work as a tattoo artist on the TLC reality TV show LA Inc., which premiered here in the U.S. back all the way in 2007 and ran for four seasons. So I'm going to start actually playing her audio. It is about... 12 and a half minutes long. Now, I edited it slightly. I did not take out any of her words per se, but Kat has a lot of ends, ums, and ticks that she does in a recording. So I took about a minute and a half out of nothing but end, um, <laughs> that's all. All the rest of the words that she said in there are there. I haven't cut out any of the things she actually said, just some of that little filler. So let's listen, and as we go through, I'll give you a little more information on Kat Von D, and let's hear what she's got to say about the criticisms and the accolades she got for getting baptized, and I'll give you my thoughts also. I just wanted to take a moment to talk to you about my baptism. I really haven't talked about it or posted anything since I posted the baptism video, and it's pretty much because I've been like kind of taking my time processing the experience and um, some of the response and uh, feedback that I've gotten and uh, just putting my thoughts together before I actually like share them with you guys. I don't plan on really talking too much about this in the future. I know that a lot of people want me to share my testimony and I'm not, I'm definitely not going to do that today, but, um, but I do plan on doing that maybe like in a podcast interview or some kind of format where I can just give you 100% of me. And right now I'm like hanging out with a crazy squirrel and another cat and <laughs> my toddlers upstairs. So, um, I've been talking to like, uh, my friend, Ali Beth Stuckey, who, who I really love her, her podcast. And so I think, I think I might end up doing like an interview about my testimony there. But for now, I just want to talk about the actual baptism because there was like a lot of questions and um, some feedback that I do want to talk about. But after this, I probably, you know, you probably really won't hear me talking too much about this stuff. And it's not for any other reason that I just like don't really feel equipped to be the poster child for, you know, Christianity. I think that I'm still learning and as I do, I will become more equipped. So rightly so, Kat's talking about not feeling equipped to be any kind of personality that's talking or teaching Christianity. She's literally newly born again, just baptized a few weeks ago, and she's being very careful with what she says because she realizes she doesn't know anything yet. And I feel the same way, and I've been a Christian for going on 15 years now, but there's a certain level of humility that's necessary there's that extra responsibility if you take on the role that you're going to start teaching people because we're going to be held responsible for the things we teach. So it's very important to make sure that what we're saying is correct. And Kat realizes she's nowhere near that. She's a new baby Christian and she's not going there. But for the time being, I feel like um, that's I've never really been that and I don't plan on doing that. So um, if you started following me because you think this will become like some kind of Christian meme page, it's not going to happen. But anyways, it was, I want to talk about like the response that I got to the video that I posted about my baptism. It was an overwhelmingly beautiful amount of just positivity and just love. Like me and my, my husband and my son, we'd go out to go get lunch throughout the week and people would just come out of nowhere, just wanting to give me a hug and congratulate me and welcome me to the family, which I love. And it's been, it's been pretty awesome. I'm actually shocked because I was expecting to get so much hate for it. You know, I know that a majority of my, my fans and my followers are not Christian. 
So Kat's being open and honest right now, talking about the hate that she thought she would get for converting to Christianity uh, because her friends, she's got a lot or has had and still has a lot of controversial celebrities as friends like Marilyn Manson, uh, Nikki Six from Motley Crue. She used to be friends with Jeffree Star, is a man who presents himself as a woman and has a makeup line. So a lot of the people she's associated herself with are kind of associated with darkness in a sense. So, like, I know that it's a turnoff to a lot of people, and, you know, everybody has had, like, their own experiences in their life that uh, might trigger certain things, and I know that everybody's on their own journey, and it's not for everybody, but this is where I'm at, and to me, my baptism was, you know, a public demonstration of where I stand with my faith. So Kat's talking here about the baptism itself and what it represents, what baptism means. And she, she states it perfectly. She's got it exactly right. You know, baptism is a public expression of your faith or your conversion and your belief now in Jesus Christ. It does not make you a follower of Jesus Christ. It's just an outward public expression that you do follow Jesus Christ. In and of itself, though, it doesn't make you a follower. It doesn't make you born again. Uh, it's simply an obedient expression of your faith and a commitment to Christ. Pretty much every example that I can think of in the Bible demonstrates that a person first comes to believe in Jesus, and then he or she is baptized as an expression of that belief. So well done, Kat, and well put. And basically letting people know that I'm not ashamed. And so that's why I really wanted to share it with people, you know, and like if there was anybody out there that felt like they were at a, a crossroads and don't feel like you fit in, because I don't feel like I fit in anywhere now. I'm going to pause there again for a minute as she's talking about she doesn't feel like she fits in anywhere. And again, she's a, she's a new Christian, so she's rejecting a lot of the old things that she's done. She used to be into witchcraft and tarot cards. And presumably a lot of the people that she's associated herself with or hangs out with also do similar things. So since getting baptized, since becoming a follower of Jesus, she feels that she doesn't fit. She doesn't belong there anymore. But also because she's a brand new Christian, she also feels that she doesn't really fit into the church. If you look at her, she is incredibly um, tattooed. She's got ink all over herself. She dresses uh, in a gothic style, in the goth style. She wears a lot of black. She does not look like the stereotypical, I'm doing the quote, the air quotes here, that you'd see, the stereotypical person that you'd see in church. And in fact, she would, she would stand out quite a bit in the church that I go to. And that I ever have, <laughs> to be honest, like, you're not, you're not alone. You know, there's, and, and it's, it's crazy how many people in my DMs and stuff, like, share with me what they've been going through too and so it's kind of cool to be able to connect in that way but there was this other side of the response that was just so awful and you know it's not it wasn't my atheist friends um you know you would think that all the hate would be coming from people who are against religion or against christianity and stuff and um you know we got like the typical like dumb mean like emoji comments but like it was really the Christians who were the worst. And there was, it was just really like sad to see like this critical display of judgment from, from Christians. Well, Kat, that's not actually shocking because Christians sin just as much as non Christians, in my humble opinion. Uh, we still hold prejudices, even though we know we shouldn't. We still judge others, even though we know we shouldn't. And I'm sorry for the criticism, but unfortunately, I guess it just comes with the world. You know, in Matthew 7, it specifically says, Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way that you judge others, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, Let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there's a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. 
So obviously, Kat, the Bible doesn't condone us to be critical of anybody else. In fact, Jesus tells us and teaches us to do the exact opposite, as I just read from Matthew 7. So I'm sorry you're going through that, and I sympathize, and I wish you didn't have to. But stay strong, because it also could be that the people that are criticizing you are claiming to be Christians, but maybe they're not really Christians. Lots of people say they're Christians, but they're not. There are a lot of fans of Jesus Christ, but not necessarily followers of Jesus Christ. Or they can also just be people who are brand new to the faith themselves, and they don't understand all the teachings yet. And I don't understand what would inspire that aside from like something that's more egoic, because that isn't Christ-like, you know, to judge people or judge people's journey. It's like, um, you would think that that most Christians would be like happy for you when you come to this point in your life, especially when, when you get baptized, like baptism is so beautiful and it's such a, a big landmark in time for me, at least it was one of the most important days of my life. So well said again, Kat, baptism is and should be one of the most important days of your life. And I'm actually quite happy that your friends and your family, even the ones who probably aren't believers, uh, went and supported you and that they were there for you and that the new church you're in was there for you and supported you. Yeah, baptism is huge because it's that public declaration that a change has happened in your life. Your belief system has changed. Your whole world is actually being turned inside out or upside down because you've come to that realization in your life that it's not supposed to be about you any longer. It's about everybody else. So that public baptism is really a huge step. I remember in one of the churches I was in, we had, I was friends with the pastor and we had a baptism, I was told, coming up the following Sunday and they were preparing for that. And when Sunday came, we were partially through the sermon and I realized that the people that were supposed to be there to be baptized, it was, what was this one lady and her her husband was going to be there with her, that she wasn't there. And I thought, oh, something must be wrong. I found out after the service, when I asked what had happened to her, why didn't the baptism take place? that she had went away for the weekend and had forgotten about her baptism and made plans uh, to go do something somewhere else and went away and she'd reschedule it. And I thought in my head, whoa, how does, how does that happen, right? As Kat said, a baptism is one of the most important things, one of the most important days of your life. How do you forget or you double book yourself on that day and then the baptism is the thing that you choose not to do? That was somebody who needed a conversation, a long conversation with the pastor before that was rescheduled. Let's continue. It's like strange that these these handful of like negative critical Christians would like come at me in such a public way as well. I think one of the biggest or one of the, the comments that I would see repeatedly would be like people saying that I was faking it and that this is just a PR stunt to get like clicks and follows and Again, I'll make the comment that people who criticize you and said that perhaps you were faking it or it was a publicity stunt, I don't know why they would say something like that unless, again, they were immature Christians themselves or really they were people that thought they were Christians but in fact truly weren't. I don't, or or views, which I think is so weird because, I mean, I don't, my Instagram is not monetized, so I don't get paid for how many views I get. And like I mentioned before, a majority of my followers are probably more turned off by my decision than actually like rooting for me. I mean, I know there's a big amount that is, but like it was a big decision to like come out and share that with the world. And I, like I said, I was expecting, you know, a lot of negativity coming from my existing fans and followers and friends and Um, Although I got a little bit, it was not anything compared to the criticisms that I got from Christians. Um, There was like a lot of criticisms, weirdly enough, about like the way that I dress and the way that I look or the way that my friends looked in the video. Ah, the age old, I don't feel like I fit in. I am not (laughs) adhering to the dress code of church. Listen, I still, and I think A lot of people feel the same way. The church that I go to right now is fairly conservative, and everybody pretty much is in khakis and a dress shirt. There are some people who wear full-blown suits and dresses. Now, after the church service, 
I go into work and part of my job is I then help to run a church service for the homeless of the community. So I'm dressed down. I go to my church in jeans and a t-shirt and sneakers. So I also, Kat, feel like I don't fit in because I'm one of the few people, it seems, um, other than maybe some teenagers who who are dressed just normally in jeans and a t-shirt. I'm not looking to impress. I'm not wearing my Sunday best. Uh, I dress appropriately for uh, the street church that I do after my normal church service. And I do. I feel judged. And I think that if churches went out of their way, even pastors themselves, to maybe change up how they dress, I think it's okay for them to dress down every now and then so that the normal person who comes in who perhaps doesn't have a lot of nice clothes would feel more comfortable and at home. And I think it's really insane that we live in a time where um, people still like judge a book by its cover. Like I feel like I, I wasn't aware that there's a, you know, a uniform that you're supposed to wear once you give your heart to Jesus. Like... <laughs> I love that term uniform. And again, just to just to kind of reiterate, um, it's true. A lot of people dress the same in churches. And in actuality, this could actually turn people away. And I think for the most part, we don't even really think about that. Diversity is great, whether it be in how we look, where we come from, what we look like, what we dress. Let's just mix it all together. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. But, you know, and I will say that there is like a certain aesthetic that is a very stereotypical aesthetic for like the Christian community. And that is not me. Like, I don't dress like that. And but at the same time, I just feel like I would never judge you for how you look. So why would you judge me? Like, what part of this is considered demonic? Or is it just because you have a perceived notion of like if people wear black clothes or if they style their hair a certain way or if they have tattoos, it's like. So as I mentioned earlier, Kat dresses kind of gothic or goth, as they say. So she wears a lot of black and heavily tattooed is somebody who's been a tattoo artist for quite a long time. She's an incredible artist. Amazingly enough, as she's started to come into her own and she's now become a Christian and been baptized, there are a lot of the tattoos that she had that no longer fit with how she feels or who she is. So she started to actually get them blacked out, which means they're just tattooing over her old artwork just in solid black. So if you look her up, Kat Von D, and you know Google her and look for pictures, you'll see some of the newer pictures of her where her arms, her back, her torso are just solid black. Now, She's, she's, for all intents and purposes, she's Mexican-American, but she's white. But she's got a good portion of her body right now that literally is black because she's just totally kind of filled in all those old tattoos. And that is quite the commitment and quite painful to go through. That to me is like the silliest thing you could say. So for all of you out there that are telling me that I'm not a real Christian unless I delete everything I've ever posted or... I got to stop listening to uh, The Cure or whatever. Um, I think that you, you, you may have gotten it a little wrong. Like another criticism that I found was just attacking my husband, I feel like. Now, her husband, I didn't know who he was, so I just looked him up. And he doesn't seem like somebody most people, if you're not into that tattoo culture, would know. His name is Oliver Peck, born in 1971. He's an American tattoo artist and a, a restaurateur and a reality television personality. And along with uh, guitarist David Navarro and tattoo artist Chris Nunez, he was the judge on the competition reality television show Ink Master for seasons 1 through 13. So he's been on TV for quite a long time. Uh, he's known for his American traditional style tattoos. He's co-owner. He's co-owner of Elm Street Tattoo in Dallas, owner of True Tattoo in Hollywood, and he also owns a restaurant called Tiki Loco. That one is quite annoying because you don't know the dynamics of our marriage and you don't know what somebody's going through. You know, like my husband has his own journey and I am here to support him and be there for him as much as I can and be the best wife that I can be for him. But until he makes his own decisions, like I'm, you know, should I just abandon ship? Should I just divorce my husband and uproot like the beautiful nuclear family that we have um, because he doesn't sing lyrics the way that you think he should sing lyrics like 
Now, I'm not sure if he's also into music or records his own music like Cat does, but I can speak to music a little bit. I was on the radio for a couple of years working for a Christian radio station, and the majority of music that I listen to is Christian-based music. You know, kind of your, your top 40 K-Love Christian music, but every now and then, when I'm in a certain mood, I like to crank up a little kid rock on my way to work. <laughs> Please, don't hold it against me. I just, the way that some of those comments were phrased were just so awful and cruel. And I just wonder what your life looks like. Do you only hang out with people that think and look like you? Because if that's the case, I would, I would say in my own humble opinion, that sounds like a very close minded life to live. And hopefully that's not the case for you. You know, I have so many friends that believe in so many different things that, you know, that I don't believe in. You know, I have friends that don't align with my political views or my spiritual views or even my parenting views. Like that does not mean that I just cut them off or I don't talk to them. Um, Exactly. We don't cut people off. Now, there are people in your life that you may have to move away from people that end up being no good for you or that lead you down the wrong path or may may even tempt you to backslide and that are not good influences. But when you become a Christian or when you change your life basically at all, whether it's Christianity or not, and you take on a 180 degree turn from what you were doing, uh, there's going to be attacks. Attacks are just simply going to begin. And that's a, that's because you, again, you had a public display that you've actually can't Uh, You've chosen a side. You've chosen the side of light. You've chosen the side of Jesus, the side of God, the, the team of heaven. And once you do that, once you publicly declare that you have chosen a side, there are going to be continual attacks against you, what you do, the people you love. It's kind of just the way it is. There is a story that I heard, and I'll, I'll try not to butcher this, and I think they called it the dream of an atheist or a dream that an atheist had where he was standing in a big field on a large fence that was wide enough that he could stand on top of it. Very high fence. I also, let's just, for story's sake, say the fence was 20 feet high. And he's standing there and over to the left, he looks down and he sees somebody who looks like Jesus and just tons of people over there in the field to the left of him. He then looks over to the right and he sees somebody that doesn't look like Satan, but is very enticing. And he knows that that is Satan, even though he doesn't have red horns and a forked tail. And in that field on the right with Satan was also tons of people. And he sat there looking back and forth and he was very confused. A second later, he looked up and he realized that Satan was standing right next to him on the wall. And Satan said to him, ah, there you are. I've been looking for you. And he responds by saying, hold on a minute. I haven't chosen where I want to go yet. I haven't chosen the left side of the field. And I certainly know I haven't chosen the right side of the field. And Satan looks at him and says, you're standing on the wall and the wall belongs to me. And again, the whole point of that story is to say, you either are a follower of Christ or you are not. There is no in between. There's no wall. You are or you aren't. You're on one team, or by default, you're on the other. I, th- I just think that's such a weird, a weird thing to, to say or do. There were some people that were criticizing the actual baptism, like because uh, Pastor Brian, he didn't dunk me all the way to where my hands weren't underwater. And um, I feel like when you start getting into that realm where you're like pinpointing all of these details that really at the end of the day do not matter. I didn't get baptized to be saved. I was already saved. Um, and I didn't get baptized, you know, to make it about me. It was never about me. Um, and I think... Exactly, Kat. Kind of to go back to what I said before, that was your public declaration of the side you've chosen, that you've chosen Jesus. And that baptism tells everybody that you realize it's no longer, your life is no longer just about you. Well put that these people that come at me with these like negative critical comments, I think should, I just hope that you're able to maybe take some time and reflect on how you're viewing the world and how you're possibly pushing people away. I think like the last thing I I, I will say about all of it is that I love you no matter what, you know, even if you don't like 
what you're saying or you don't like the things I'm saying and um, or we don't agree on certain things like I still love you and um, I might I might not be down with some you know the way you do life but um, but that's no no reason to to hate or criticize and I guess that's that's really really kind of what I wanted to cover I do want to say like give a, sh a huge shout out to my actual church I, I go to a really small church here in in my town Vive Indiana and it's a it's called Switzerland Baptist Church and we have a very small congregation of like you know some days it's 12 people some days it's 25 people and uh, I don't go to a mega church and you know I'm not dissing any mega churches but that's just not my vibe I don't really care about like smoke and mirrors or how big your band is like um you know like our little choir like we just we sing from the heart we might not be the best but we sing from the heart and i think that that's that's like what worship is and what it should be so um i just love that my little humble church was so warm and welcoming to all my friends who flew out and um have embraced me and my family um so deeply that like i've never really felt this feeling of family and i think that you know i'm just so grateful that that I'm here and um, that I'm able to share this with my my new church family. And I hope that those of you out there that are looking for your tribe, you know, you just got to keep looking and um, I can be here for you one on one, obviously, like I don't plan on doing, you know, a lot of videos about this kind of stuff, but uh, but I'm here for you. And I I think I think that's it. I just want to say thank you. And um, I love you all so much. That's awesome. She found a little church that sounds like in the middle of almost nowhere, 12 to 25 people. I've been in a church like that, and that is small and intimate, and that is awesome. So I'd like to say to the church and to the pastor, and if there is any other staff there, well done for making Kat feel home, well done for baptizing her, and continue that good work in discipling her to be the Christian I know she can be. And thank you, Kat, and what else can I say other than welcome to the family? Thank you for being part of today's episode on My Christian Observations. I genuinely hope that our discussion has not only deepened your understanding of God's Word, but that it's also opened your heart and your eyes to the remarkable role that you play in breathing life into Scripture and igniting transformation into your own life. Always remember that you are an indispensable part of this incredible journey, and together we'll unearth more treasures from the Bible and enrich our lives. Don't forget to visit my website at mychristianobservations.com. There you can click on the freebies link to download free PDF transcriptions of my podcast episodes. And you can click on the newsletter link to get my latest newsletter featuring exciting and new and upcoming podcasts and YouTube channels. Be sure to show your support by hitting that like button, subscribing, and sharing this message with a friend or two that you think could use it. I'm really looking forward to reconnecting with you in just a few days as we'll continue to delve even deeper into the transformative power of God's Word. And until then, stay blessed and be a beacon of light in somebody else's life.